Hey there, beautiful people. My name is Tim Lee. Welcome to another Draw Too Much sketch lesson. And today, I guess, literally, we are going to be talking about sketching, specifically pre-sketching a little bit, and trying to talk a little bit about why it's a necessity. Uh, I have a bunch of students right now, as you can see right down below here, and these students are going to be joining me in a class here in the next half hour or so on our Patreon uh, Discord. And it's a really great class. Uh, it's more of a mentorship, honestly, where I look over their work. I I uh, help them assess what they need to do next, and it's 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 a lot of fun, and uh, we have a really amazing group. But one of the things I see them being very distracted by right now is the idea of they want to take their art from drawing, pre-sketching, and go and and all of that stuff, and jumping immediately into the world of uh, caricature and uh, live caricature, and that's great. I'm not going to stop them from doing that in any way, shape, or form. Um, and a lot of caricature like myself uh, have learned how not to pre-sketch uh, and immediately jump into caricature. So as soon as they are drawing someone, they sit down and they're going, okay, I'm looking at that person and all right, here's the first eye, here's the next eye, and then they work on their, you know, whatever from there. And that's great and there's some really amazing artists, but these artists have years upon years upon years of experience. Now, am I going to tell my kids uh, or, or the students, I definitely can't call them kids, am I going to tell them that they are they shouldn't practice this? Absolutely not. Because absolutely, the earlier start on, you start on trying to understand this, the better off you're going to be. But in saying that, the one thing I am going to uh, caution them on is if you do not know structure of the face, if you do not know how the pre-sketch helps you, uh, in the same way that when I draw a mouth, I know how to draw a mouth properly. You know, I know how to, I know where things are going to go, and that was not proper in any way, shape, or form. But I know what a mouth is, and I didn't have to create shapes and ovals and circles like we see some artists do when they're trying to create a perfect atomical version. You know, I don't have to do that because it's all up here. The only reason that you choose not to pre-sketch is because it's already up here. You know, you already have that up here, and to do anything extra to the paper is a waste of time. In saying that, you can see why time and practice is really truly the key method that we have to discuss here. In saying that, I do want to talk about quick caricature and quick pre-sketching form, taking that first 30 seconds to one minute to make your pre-sketch. Now, our humongous artists that I have seen over the years as I've had the opportunity to work with some really amazing people, um, at, at SeaWorld I've seen artists who have very thin uh, paper, and so what they'll do is they'll take the paper underneath the sheet that they plan on drawing on, they'll draw a pre-sketch, and then they'll put their normal paper back over top so they can see their pre-sketch through. And what they would create very, very quickly quickly, uh, it was not the kind of detail that you might expect for a pre-sketch. And that's part of what I want to talk about today in our video. Uh, so really quickly, a lot of these caricaturists focused on heads, and I'm personally a, uh, a guy who focused on head to shoulders myself, so I'm going to do that in this video. But in that same topic, in that same discussion, uh, I want to show you why pre-sketching is important, but at the same time, what you can do to minimize your efforts, okay? Uh, and this is just going to be as quick as I can, get to the point of how do we go from uh, pre-sketching where you're doing an awful lot of detail like I do on a lot of my personal work that you can see on my Instagram to suddenly, you know what, really I don't need that much to begin topic. Um, let's go ahead and talk about that. So let's pretend that this program here in front of me, which is Clip Studio Paint Pro, drawing on my uh, Wac Wacom Cintiq 21UX, a very old model, still on the hunt for something to replace it. Uh, if you know anything that you like, let me know. Um, and so we're going to be drawing in this, but we're going to pretend that this is a real situation, that someone has sat down in front of me at Disney, at any of the theme parks that I've worked at, and now in this next moment, I have to draw them like that. And if I'm taking five, ten minutes max to draw a caricature of them, what do I do to speed up the process? Now, I'm only going to talk about pre-sketching in this video, but you'll get what I'm saying as we move in here. So, right now, I do like using red pens. I stick with red pens quite often, but what I usually do is with my red pen or red pencil, I make sure I can still get some value you know, and size. So I can get thick lines, I can get thin lines, 
I can get really light lines or I can get really heavy red lines. So that way I have the most flexibility that I can have. Uh, the other thing that I do is I turn up my stability, but not very much. I turn it up just enough so it does give some control to my line so I feel good, but it doesn't take over my personality. Uh, turning up the stabilization in any app, in any program, whether on your computer or you're on your iPad or whatever, uh, it will begin to take over your personality. Your line style shows... Uh, people get to know you by how you draw, uh, and if you turn up the stabilization too much, unless that is what they get to know you for, uh, it removes your personality from your work. Uh, admittedly, I turn mine way up, and people have learned that I'm a very vector-style looking kind of artist. You know, my stuff looks very uh, digital detail, and I love that about my work. Uh, but depending on your style, that would depend on you. The other thing that I do is I turn the brush density very way down. So now I, I should have this very, very thin, faint structure, okay? And I do feel like my stabilization is up just a little bit too much. So in the, let's, let's take this immediately right to work. If I'm thinking about someone and I'm focusing on them, I'm looking at them, and the first thing I'm going to do is consider the overall shape of the head to the shoulders. How does that look? Is there anything that kind of gives me an idea? I think about the Proko lessons that I strongly suggest you check out. They do some amazing work on their caricature stuff. And those Proko lessons, they show uh, drawing Stan Proko as, I think it was like an onion or something like that. And uh, having a spirit animal, if you will, a spirit vegetable that you would recognize as a fun way to draw someone. And the same suggestion I would suggest to you as well. Uh, don't be afraid to utilize something in your life that you would recognize that you go, oh, their face would work for that. So when I'm drawing someone tall, usually I notice that they have a very long, gaunt neck and that their face just kind of sits on that and it might protrude forward a little bit. So my pre-sketch, instead of being, uh, it, let's just say my pre-sketch, if I was getting started, would be okay. First off, I know where on the page I want them to be because I'm going to uh, put their face here in the center, maybe off to the side just a little bit. I'm going to put their neck here, depending on how long it is. And in Disney, we used to like putting the names of the people down below. So whatever their name is, I would put their name down here. And I would adjust accordingly so that however big I made that head, I could bring the neck down and have the shoulders there as well, okay? And depending on what structure I'm going for. So I at least have a theory of what I'm looking for. Nine times out of ten, when I draw... I'm looking at my page and I'm thinking, okay, I obviously want them to be dead center. I want them, their attention to be dead center. I want when you look at this to not feel like the head's like way over here or way over here or slightly off center here looking this way. What I want to do is I want to kind of set it so that when I draw this head here and I start working on it, like maybe one of the eyes falls on there so much. And actually, I would bring it more over, even a little bit more. So I'm not going to put it perfectly in the center. I'm not going to exactly lock the face perfect in the center. Because if I have the person looking this way, then they're going to feel like they're leaning that direction. And that's just personal preference. Some artists would disagree with me on that. So the first thing I would do is I would figure out what their name is. And I would say, okay, let's say their name is John. All right. So J-O-H... N, all right, so once I have the idea of that, now I have this whole area here to work with. All right, so if John's really, really tall and he has a long face, then I'll enjoy kind of stretching that face out nice and long, getting that neck nice and long. And then from there, I would apply the shoulders. And I would make sure that if John had a big nose, I had enough room over here where once I drew that nose on there, that this would still be somewhat square in the in there. And so it depends on how you want to exaggerate the form. All right, so you get what I'm saying, right? We're on the same page for the, mo for the most part. So let me back up here. We're going to go ahead and remove all of this. So pre-sketching. Um, when I've done pre-sketching in the past here in my studio, uh, there's different ways I go about doing it. I usually do about three different layers. So my first layer is just trying to see if I'm even in the right state of mind with how I'm drawing this person's face. So what I'll do is I'll get my first starting sketch in there. And this first starting sketch is just trying to get things roughly in the right place, okay? So I'm just blocking things in roughly. All right, so if I feel like i am kind of got a good likeness of them, if I feel like it looks like them pretty much, 
for the most part. Then I run into my next step, and the next step is more detail. And what I'll usually do is I'll make another layer on top, I'll bring up my brush density, and I will actually shrink down my brush ever so slightly. Okay, and in that second thing of detail, I'll go in and I'll start actually drawing in some more detail of the eyes, of the eyelids, of maybe the eye, uh, which way the eyes are looking. Uh, get some more detail on that nose. And by the time all is said and done, I'll have spent 10, 15 minutes on my pre-sketch alone. Uh, that's not exactly going to work in the world of caricature. I mean, yes, it does work if the person expects you're going to take a while and they're just happy to be a part of the conversation and have a good time. But what do you do if you wanted to get from point A to point B without having to worry about some of that? And, and putting in all of this detail and building all this up before you even start inking. Let's back up once again. I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And if I'm out at a theme park and I'm going to start working on someone, uh, if I'm doing it digitally or if I'm doing it uh, analog, uh, like I said, artists would take a piece of paper, draw their pre-sketch, put it underneath their other piece of paper so that they could see their pre-sketch through. A lot of artists do that. Now, the paper that we used at Disney was much, much thicker. Actually, I still have stock from Disney down here, and it's been years since I worked at Disney. And so what I would do in this case, or what I did there, is I would draw incredibly lightly with the pencil, and I would just go like this. I'd go, okay, um, long face. So I want to have some fun with long face. So I'll go ahead and I'll put like a rectangle of a long face. Long neck. Okay, I want that long neck protruding. Uh, and what kind of shirt are they wearing? Okay, they're wearing a... Uh, uh, just a collar shirt, so do something like that. And then there we go, now I got my pre-sketch theory in mind. Now what do I need to do? Okay, which way do I want this face looking? Okay, I want it looking kind of off to the side, and I want it looking fairly straight ahead, and then that's pretty much where I stop. With this here, I can usually go much, much further, but this is a bit of practice and a bit of time. I can immediately usually go in with a black pen, and now that I have a basic theory of how this is all laid out, now I can move right into my inking. So turning my stabilization way up, because I ink with a lot of stabilization, uh, between 40 and 100, truth be told. And if I'm in digital, I don't mind zooming in. But I want to make sure that my brush is just big enough, so if I'm pushing in the light, I get a really nice thin line, and if I push really hard, if I mash, then I get that big, deep, thick line. And then from there, I can go ahead and start uh, doing actually my inking. So this is where practice comes into play, and where you need to understand what you're looking for. If I know roughly about how the nose is going to feel, everything needs to be down to one line as much as possible. So you're going to go one line, one line, one line, okay? It, the less lines that you can do, the better. The, the more I go in and I scratch out more and more, the worse this is going to get. So this is all down to thinking, thinking with assurance, thinking with certainty of what I'm trying to complete, okay? And if I'm finding I'm struggling, I might actually try and turn up my stabilization. There we go. Where now I can get a little bit more control on this because my stabilization will slow down some of my pen moves. Okay, so once I have this, then I'm really honestly focused on likeness and line value. I want my lines to be as clean as possible. I'm getting a weird drag on the end of my pen there. This little bit right here is when my pen has lifted away from my uh, pad. So that's something important to keep an eye out for as well. But then I can go in here and I can, for the most part, draw the face that I'm intending to create without having to do any any kind of pre-sketch because I know where about the face is and I can start doing my design off of that. But this is where understanding the structure, understanding why I'm choosing to draw these lines where I'm choosing to draw them, understanding that I have a bit of a game plan already set up, this is where all this is going to come into play. And also understanding, which like we taught about in our very first lesson when we started our, our, our pre-sketch lessons uh, in our Patreon classes, we talked about some of the positions of the face and why you draw the ears where you draw them on the face and why you draw the eyes where you draw them, why they align with certain parts of the face and what do you do to know that you've done it exactly right or whatnot. But if you consider how much time I've put into this so far, I am doing nothing except going right into my 
inking. And that's great because uh, when it comes to caricature, you don't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be an exact science. Now, if I'm drawing digitally for a client who wants a logo, then yes, I'm going to be much, much more precise. And I'm going to spend the time uh, of pre-sketching three or four or five different layers. But the thing you need to understand is the world of caricature at a theme park or at a party or at a birthday or at a, uh, at a basketball game or wherever you're set up is not going to be studio perfect. Honestly, if you can say, hey, if you enjoyed this, consider looking at some of my digital work that I do where I can do something much more precise. I can do logo style caricatures and really put in an extra effort. I mean, it's another place where you can maybe make another sale. I mean, they need to see that you're good at what you're doing, but you're actually only just at the tip of the barrel of what you're doing right at your moment. So the only reason that you have chosen to create that undercoat, that underdesign, is because you already know what you're going to do on the top. You already have a theory of how you're going to push things around and mold things and make it work for you. So that is going to be most of the lesson here. My suggestion is don't just throw away your pre-sketch. Minimize it, minimize it, minimize it, and, and learn to think smaller and smaller with the pre-sketch. This pre-sketch, if I had done it in the moment, 10, 15 seconds. Because I already had a basic idea of how big the face was, I already had a basic idea of how big the neck was, and I know how to add on top of that to get to the final. So doing my pre-sketch, I created basically two rectangles and some shoulders to make my final reference of what I needed. And really, I didn't even need that. Um, in time, you'll get that good. In time, you'll get that good, and you'll be able to do it. And let me tell you, there's going to be good days and bad days. There's going to be days when you're drawing caricatures where you're just not going to feel up to par. And going back to pre-sketching can save you from a very bad day of drawing. And other days, you're going to feel great, and you're going to be ready to rock on with a whole bunch more pieces, and you're going to be fantastic. And you may find you, not, you won't need any kind of line work or pre-sketching at all. But when it comes down to it, push comes to shove, you, you can't forget that you're dealing with structure. You're not just drawing a face on a piece of paper, you're sculpting a face on a piece of paper. One of the most difficult challenges you will face as an artist is taking a 3D face and putting it on a 2D piece of paper. And if you do that well, you've beaten the mold of what most people struggle in. And that's where I want to help you get out of what you can so easily get stuck in and be able to focus on the future. Um, so don't just give up and go right into your, your drawings because I'm seeing a lot of uh, my students who are doing a great job without any pre-sketch, but truth be told, they're drawing lines in places that don't make any sense. Uh, because they've forgotten the initial structure. And because of that, it can ugly up what is supposed to be beautiful. So nothing wrong with putting that practice in and thinking less and less and less. But don't put the horse before the car don't put the carriage before the horse. Is that the proper turn that I'm thinking of? You know, don't don't take too many steps ahead just yet until you know more about structure and you know more about likeness and you know more about essence. I know some of my students are getting some of those things, but it's going to take time to really feel that you can take a step away from the pencil and go straight to your marker, especially in a live situation. So focus on getting the key things figured out. How do you make the person happy? How do you keep them smiling? How do you give them something unique on the end point so that when it's time to think a little faster, you already know the basics of how to take care of your client. Remember in the end, making sure that they're smiling and that they had a good time really is more important than the caricature itself. If they had a good time and you can get an essence of them, a spirit of them in your drawing, you're going to have a much better chance of making a great sale and a return customer or someone who will always talk about that caricature, hang it up in their bathroom, God knows where they hang these things up, and give them an experience they won't forget because that's the key thing. All right, that's going to do it for this video. I hope that you've liked it. I got to go get set up for my class now, which we do once a month. And right now I haven't announced when the next classes are because truth be told, I set that up with my students on our Discord. If you want to get involved, don't forget, it's not just about the classes. We have an awesome Discord community where you can come in and get support from other artists as well. It's a wonderful, literal 
feeling of a family. And it would be an honor to have you join us. Uh, links are in the description below for anything that you might be curious about when it comes to joining us on Patreon and in our classes. I gotta go. God bless you guys. We'll see you next time right here on another Draw Too Much Sketch Lesson. I hope that that helped you out.